Hello everybody, my name is Gunnar and welcome back for another video of NHL 22 Franchise Mode. We're going to continue this series. In the last video, I was pretty pissed off because uh, we didn't ended up having a really bad simulation for the entire second year. Um, nothing went great. We started off decent, but uh, still when doing, like team-wise, we were losing games. We kept losing games. Uh, like individual stats is doing fine for my team. Once again, I couldn't figure out the pro, uh, like the the right strategies, the right stuff. So I took some time off, managed to maybe pull something out out of my ass, boys. Let's see really quick. Uh, let, let's see. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be working with: weak side lock, one four, aggressive, protect net, staggered, passive box, overload. Strong sides land, five back, close support and aggressive. And everybody's going to be on overload with a setting, some settings here and there that uh, are modified and whatnot. So these, I'm not going to touch the strategies anymore. I am not going to touch them. The only thing I'm going to touch is if we're losing games badly and we need to change power play or penalty kill i'll change those but i'm not going to change anything else anything that's five on five i'm not going to do it for the lines themselves uh this is what's going to look like really i don't have any other options than this i feel like they should be playing well together they're just not so i'm going to try and figure out a way to make them play uh perfectly together of course uh, we are, tr I am really trying my best right here to make this thing good. Um, Owen Power is going to be playing on the third pair, boys. He was doing all right in terms of points. 16 points is not too shabby, boys. But he could have done, uh, done uh, doing a lot better. So I'm definitely playing him on the third pair with Manson. Ristolainen with Yoki Harju. Uh, I'm looking literally, uh, what I'm looking at when I'm looking at them is... I, I, I do offensive awareness and defensive awareness. I put them together, split them in two, do the average of those two, and whoever's got the highest number gets to be at first place, right? So that's basically how I'm going to roll with it right now. I don't care about anything else. Campbell needs to step it up, and he needs to not be injured for half a, se a season like he did. And we've got looking and really needs to step it up. I know he had to fill up the starter role for a while. But Tokarski was doing that job. So uh, he doesn't have any excuses. For the rest, don't have anything whatsoever. I'm just hoping that everything's going to work out, plan, pan out the way I wanted it to. And also, the thing is, we need to start looking maybe trades. I don't know. We're at the trade deadline, basically. So I don't know if I want to make any trades. Do I need to? Like, Akposo is a power forward. We've got another power forward right here, a two-way forward in Bjork. So maybe we want to modify this. We want to get start getting rid of our two-way forwards. This is a decision I'm uh, starting to do, boys. I don't want any two-way forwards or any two-way defensemen in my team. Not anymore. Just a bunch of offensive and defensive defensemen. And uh, a bunch of... Uh, playmakers, snipers, power forwards are welcomed, but they're very limited. And I've got a lot, too many power forwards for my own liking. Even I've got two of them. We need to change things up. And clearly, two way forwards. I know for a fact that they hurt your team. They're not good at all. The two way forwards are just not good, boys. Uh, two way demons. That's about the only thing I have in my team. And the problem is defensive defensemen. I'll probably keep the same D-man. The D-mans I'm not going to change, uh, I guess. But the two-way forwards, I got to get rid of those. I got to get rid of those, boys. So first and foremost, I need to look at the value of my roster. Uh, if we're going to left-wing position, we have over here at 81 uh, overall, Peyton Krebs does have a lot of potential, uh, a lot of uh, good stuff. But he's a playmaker, so we want to keep him. Asplan. Two-way forward has some good, decent value. And uh, Sniper for the Skinner, we're going to keep him. So Asplund and Bjork are the ones we gonna want, uh, we're going to want to get rid of. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of Asplund uh, because he hasn't done too much for us. He's doing pretty decent. But the problem is he's a two-way forward. 
Let's replace him with an actual playmaker or sniper. It's going to help out our team even further. He's got more value than a Bjork. And uh, Bjork, how many years? He's got one year left, so we can get rid of him anyways last, uh, next year. So no, pro no uh, issues whatsoever here. So we're going to start looking. Uh, is there any players whatsoever that would be interesting for us to trade for, boys? Let's take a look. I'll uh, scout ahead and I'll show you guys if there's anything. I may have found a guy we're looking for. Clayton Clutch Keller, boys. Uh, Clayton Keller, 85 overall. So he's a step above uh, what we have right now. And also, he's a high top six and can still grow. We still got two or three years, two and a half years to grow. So he can still grow. So that's definitely interesting. He's having a pretty bad season. Well, a decent season in terms of points. But uh, point minus wise, not doing too good with the Arizona Coyotes. I'm pretty sure he would want out. And uh, they do want, the Arizona Coyotes do want Asplon. They are interested in having him. Asplon can still grow as well. Aurora gonna have we are gonna have to give them a little bit uh, more uh, in exchange. Uh, 55 overall Nabokov would be an interesting pick for them, but uh, I'm tempted to give them maybe a low top four like uh, Yakola. Yakola could be a good option, right here. So Yakola was for us a fourth round pick, decent pick, but I don't know if we're gonna play him anytime soon. And I want to try and get myself a really good pick. So let's see if that's going to go true or not. It's not even going to go true. So it's not even enough. So uh, we're going to uh, we're not going to do Yakola. It's not enough. Uh, I I am interested in giving possibly possibly giving them Nabokov. Medium top six, however, it's not a low. So medium top six has a lot of potential. I kind of want to keep him, although he's a two-way forward. No, okay, so never mind. He's a two-way forward. We don't want to keep him, boys. We're never going to play him anyways. Let's get rid of him, all right? And we can probably get something in exchange as well. Get a, a player in exchange or a draft pick. Let's try and get a third round, all right? So let's try and get a third round and Keller for Nab Nabokov and Asplon. Let's try and do that. That's not going to go through. So third round pick is might be a little bit too much. Let's try for the fourth round pick. Like a fourth round pick. Is it going to work? Not enough. Okay, fifth. A fifth round pick. I know for a fact we can get a, uh, we're gonna, uh, we can get a pick for this. If we can't get a pick, that's fine. But I'm pretty sure this is a trade that should go through. There we go. Sixth round pick. Okay, uh, we're not. Let's just go straight up, boys. Straight up, Nabokov and Asplon for Keller. There it is. So we couldn't, uh, we didn't map manage to get a pick. I wasn't going to try and do the seventh pick. It wasn't worth it. So we did get um, an upgrade for Asplan. We had to give away a prospect and a top, uh, a basically a top six medium uh, prospect. But uh, we were never going to play him with the new strategy I've got, which is basically like the old strategy where I, I just don't want to have two or fours on my team anymore. Two or fours are the plague of the universe. They are absolutely atrocious, and you do not want those types of players in your team. Uh, so K Clutch Keller, boys, he's in there. He's with us now. What we need to look at is we have Ox Post over here. He's 80 overall, but he's a power forward. We got a sniper in Jack Quinn. Another power forward in Alex Stock in the sniper. Our right wing position is doing fine. Uh, I want to get rid of the two efforts. So if is there any two efforts I need to get rid of? Dylan Cousins is a two-way forward, boys. And that is the only one. Only two-way forward in the team, but he's an 85. So he's a decent player for us. He's, a, he's doing really good. He's actually doing pretty decent. But a, a problem is because he's a two-way forward, that might come uh, as a problem. That be, might become a problem in the long term. We'll see, though. I'll, I'll quickly change up really quick. Uh, Clayton got Keller. There we go. You're going there. 96.89 and that's 91.87 so he's definitely a lot better than Skinner so he's going on the first line guaranteed and that's a plus five for the first line as well bringing them all up to 90 overalls boys so that's really good uh, so I'm guessing what we want to do right here is possibly look at the trade value for Cousins is Cousin 
Does cousin have a uh because we only have remember we only have a right for one trade, one more trade, because we did a trade early on in the season before the season had we started at. So he's got some pretty decent value. High top six as well. We could trade him away, but we would need a really good center in exchange. I am not too sure if uh we is that really a thing that we want to go for? If we want to really gonna trade him, I mean, we're never gonna get someone like Crosby. He's too high up at value, boys. So forget about that. That Crosby is not gonna happen. But we could possibly get because if we trade for him, we need to to get something in the someone in the higher tiers or in the nineties, nineties to ninety fives. We have Nick Suzuki right here. Playmaker, there we go, Nick Suzuki, boys, a, a 90 overall, medium elite, having a really good season with the Montreal Canadiens. He's got some really good stats, so that could be a good potential one. Uh, Jack Eichel a bit too high up, Matt Barzell as well. Uh, Suzuki's got, it's basically the same as Bar Barzell, actually, but yeah, it's kind of the same. Anything else? Pedersen? Meh. A bit too high up for my liking, or it's going to be hard to get him. Sean Couturier has eight-year deal. Holy shit, at 30 years of age? Or I don't know about that one. We could probably get him, try and get him as well. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Oh, there we go. We do have options. Uh, we do have... But well, that's the that's actually not really an upgrade. It will be kind of the same. I don't really want to go for... I mean, I could go for Malkin and Bergeron, boys, but... Uh, the value would be perfect, but they are in the same, like the the same region as our Dylan Cousins, and I'm not too sure if I really want to go for that. Want to go for an actual clear upgrade? We're gonna try. First thing we're gonna try is try and get Suzuki. If we can't get him, then we'll try and get some someone in the same gam as. Uh, as these guys, but uh, uh, as uh, cousins, but it's gonna be hard. It's definitely gonna be hard. So cousins, in exchange for Suzuki, we are gonna have to give them something in return. I don't want to give them draft picks though. That's the thing. Apple buy is a defensive defenseman, but it seems like he's gonna be a really good defensive defenseman though. I really want to keep him. He's gonna be a good one. I want to keep that guy, boys. So. I am interested in giving away Yakola, and we can give away a draft pick. We got some extra ones right here, uh, an extra second round pick. We can get rid of that, but even that would be a little bit too high. Maybe a third round pick would be enough. I feel like a third round pick in Yakola with uh, Cousins, who has a one year deal, by the way, needs to be re-signed. Uh, we, uh, I feel like that's a good trade. For Suzuki, eight year deal, medium elite boys. Let's see if we can get that. All right, so not quite enough, boys. So I'm not getting higher than a second. So I am uh, willing to give you a second round pick from the Philadelphia Flyers, the extra pick I had. I'm willing to give you that in exchange. You could be, you could literally give me a fourth. Give me a fourth in exchange. There we go. Give me a fourth and Suzuki for the second. There we go. Nope, not going to happen. Okay, all right, all right. Not a fourth, maybe a fifth. Maybe a fifth, boys. Let's see. Not okay. Let, never mind. Just straight up. St not, not even straight up. They want more. So I'm not. I'm not going higher than the second round pick, boys. We were almost there in terms of value. The value was perfect. They just didn't want to. They didn't want to go there. So well, we're not gonna get a Suzuki, unfortunately. We could easily get all. Uh, however easily get a Bergeron or Malkin. That's definitely a, a thing that we can get. Never mind. Actually, 9386 uh, in comparison to Bergeron, which is a 9094. Uh, Bergeron is a 2 4 though, so that wouldn't make any sense. We could go for Malkin, though. Malkin is a power forward, so we can once again... I keep getting uh, going for him every single time, but we could try and get him. Why not? But he's not a clear upgrade. That's the thing. He's not a clear upgrade, boys, but uh, at least he's uh, somewhat better than Cousins because instead of a two for, for two way forward, it ends up being a def it ends up being a power forward, which is a little bit better. 
So we're gonna try it out. It's the pick. Actually, it's kind of the same. It's kind of the same value, and I'm actually interested in say, uh, uh, seeing if I cannot get my hands on a possible third round pick, even, boys. Stretch it out? Nope. Not gonna happen. All right, so maybe a fourth round pick. I mean, we can try our luck, boys. Not happen. Okay, not happening. I think it's, a, it's gonna be probably a straightforward trade. I can still uh, try. Yeah, fifth round pick not gonna work. So, a straight up trade. Malkin for Cousins. Let's see if it's gonna go true. There we go. Straight up trade. Malkin for Cousins, boys. Trade one for one. And uh, instead of a two-way uh, two center, we got ourselves a power forward center. Probably not gonna keep him forever. He's only gonna be there for the two-year deals that he's got. The two-year deal he's got. But he's still a little bit not a clear upgrade, but a, a small upgrade compared to what we already had. The reason why I didn't trade for any defensemen is because I'm, I know my defensemen can play better. I like the, the way it looks. I could have went for a better goaltender, but I trust them. Maybe I shouldn't, but I do trust them, boys. Let's see if Malkin and Keller at the first line, our brand new, uh, two brand new players, are going to help us at all with the simulation. Or if they're going to screw things up even further. I don't know how it's going to go. But Arizona straight away. We traded. Remember Keller comes from Arizona. So we're going to have. He's, he gets the chance right away to play against his old team. So let's do this. First game of simulation after the trade. Overtime win boys. That's what I like to see. And we're going into the trade deadline now. We're going to keep the current trade block. And we're going to continue simming. We are going to look at the trades though that happened, that's for sure. So biggest trades, uh, Gaucher f uh, and a bunch of prospects in exchange for Eric Carlson. Carlson going to New Jersey, boys. Interesting, Eric Carlson going to New Jersey. playing. So P.K. Subin and Carlson are actually, I think Subin is in the free agency actually, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was in free agency last time. So uh, Carlson is in Jer New Jersey now, interesting one, that's for sure. Let's see, uh, that's by far the biggest trade then. It's not mine. Mine and with Malkin, it's not even the biggest trade. It's actually, uh, it, it could very well be the, the New Jersey Devils acquiring uh, Carlson. So anybody else worth noticing? Simon Varlamov going to Washington. He's going back to uh, Washington, boys. Petrie going to Winnipeg. So Petrie is going back to Winnipeg. Well, actually, he was with the Edmonton Oilers before, so never mind. But he's going to Winnipeg. Interesting. So we got a bunch of stuff right here. I don't see anybody else so far. Matthias Ekholm. Van Riemsdyk. Yeah, I don't really see anything. Uh, oh, Gallagher. There we go. Gallagher going to, say, uh, to the Blues. The St. Louis Blues. Vanishek. Vanishek going to uh, Los Angeles. Okay. And the other one, yeah, so it's pretty much for the biggest trade, it's pretty much a tie between the Carlson trade and uh, mine with uh, Malkin. So quite interesting trades that happen right there. Let's see, uh, up against the Ottawa Senators, a regulation loss. Uh, another regulation loss, two in a row, boys. Not good. Third, three in a row. All right, let's see, C can we bounce back up? Stuart Skinner it was injured. He's back. So that, I guess that was a minor injury or something. There we go. We, we got ourselves a win against the um, the Rangers. Let's keep it going, boys. Oh, my God. All right. Another regulation loss. Nothing to help me at all. Nothing to help me. I, th I did tell you guys I wasn't going to change the strategies at all. So it doesn't help me. The trades don't help me. The strategies don't help me either. Uh, last game right here against, there we go, two wins in a row at least right there so to put it up at 70 games. We are definitely not making the playoffs this year. I don't care at this point. I, don't, I just don't care. I just want to look for the future and upgrade my team the proper way this time around. Uh, uh, we're going to wait. If it takes 20 years for us to get a cup, it'll take 20 years. I don't give a fuck, boys. Uh, I will get that cup with the Buffalo Sabres. Don't worry about it. It's just how much time is it going to take. Now Malkin, Keller, and Austin's got a plus 5 overall. Somehow it seems like they're not working well together. So 
There's another problem in our hands, boys. They sometimes, like the chemistry, the plus fives and, and stuff, you don't even want to look at those because apparently they're just bad overall. You just don't want to look at those types of things. We got three snipers playing together, which is probably the problem right here. Jacqueline is not having a good time because whoever's playing with him is playing bad. And now we got two snipers playing together, which I don't have a choice but to put them together, boys. So I could instead uh, play, like, put a power forward in there. I could do that. I could help out, boys. Put up uh, Alex Stock in here instead. Jacqueline playing on the third line. Sniper playmaker, uh, two playmakers in there. Put ourselves a power forward. So playmaker, power forward, sniper. Power forward, playmaker, two way forward. All right, let's try that combination, uh, got that combination, boys. We'll try that out. Let's see if it works out uh, at all or whatnot. And for the rest, Campbell playing better. And I feel like uh, Lukanen was playing better as well. So it's just a matter of finding out what's not working. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, team strategies. Maybe we'll find out what's not working, boys. So goals four per game. We're not scoring really any goals. I think we're going up. I'm pretty sure. Uh, goals against. We're giving a, still giving up a lot of goals, but we're trending like upwards. We're turning into a good side in terms of uh, the defensive bar. I'm pretty sure. Power play is really good. And penalty kill is still atrocious, but it's going up. I don't want to change anything, boys. I'm not going to change anything. I feel like everything's fine. I can see we're giving up a lot of goals. Seven goals per game. There we go. Another four goals that we gave up. At least we won in overtime. But we're giving up a lot of goals. Sure. But at least, like, we're learning to play together. Chemistry, brand new players into it and all. And we got two wins right there, just in a row. There was a shootout loss, but it's an extra point. So, you know, at least it's not too bad. And the, there we go. We got a win against the Washington Capitals. That's the biggest part is the thing is the fact that I don't really care anymore. If we don't make the playoffs, I don't care. I know we're not going to make them anymore anyways. So it doesn't matter to me. What does matter is to not finish too far low right on the uh, rankings because i want to be able to like get the chances to get a first round pick that would be the best option right here is getting the tweener zone we get an extra point right here against the, uh, the jets we get a win against the uh, the the capitals i just want to finish strong finish uh, finish in a strong uh, uh, in a strong matter and really like Play the perfect route right here as much as possible. Like try and be upwards in the standings. Because uh, we want to get that uh, lottery ticket. Uh, right? We, we want to get that lottery chance where we could possibly get the first round pick. 80 points. We definitely went up a little bit. 6-1-3 in, in the last record. Turning things around boys. My team's not producing individual stats wise. Not doing as good. But... Uh, my team is doing a be uh, is doing better, so definitely something that I want to see. We're still in the bottom though. We're still definitely in the bottom. There is we could still get we got two more games to play, so we can still make it to 82 uh, to 84 points. It's still possible, and we can hope that the Red Wings in Boston doesn't uh, don't win. But I mean, the other teams on the other side already clinched it up, boys. So. The only way for us to make it to the playoffs is by being the top three. That's just clear as day. So uh, that's not going to happen. There's a loss, unfortunately, regulation loss against the Red Wings. Can we get ourselves at least a win for the last game? Yes, we can. All right. So an overtime win. Ended up at 82 games played. Did everybody play? No, nope, not everybody played. I think now everyone did. Yes, everyone did now. Okay, so let's take a look at the standings, boys. Obviously, for a second time in a year, a second time in a row, we did not make it to the play uh, make the make it to the playoffs. We did end up though with an upwards. We're going upscale in terms of goals for uh, goals for, and downwards in terms of goals against. So everything's equaling itself out, boys. We're playing better. We're just playing better overall, which is definitely something I like to see. Power play, it's decent. Uh, could be better. 
and penalty kill was really bad for a long time it's starting to drop uh ba bounce back up though it's definitely uh doing doing that for the entire league though so now we got the pittsburgh penguins at 20 21st 20 there we go 22 let's hope that we are in the top 15 or something boys the vegas golden knights the krakens okay 27th we are 27th, which means we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a chance. I think we have a chance for a possible chance to get at least first round or a top three pick. We got a chance for a top three pick for sure. That is the good, the good news right there. That's just the good news. If we take a look at individual stats. Uh, for the uh, goals, uh, goal wise, our best score was Olafson. And once again, the best player of our team was Olofsson again, boys. So two times in a row. Pretty similar year to last year. The same amount of points, except this time around, he, he scored a lot more goals. That's good for him. I mean, he's consistent. You know what to expect out of him. He's going to give you 70 points per game, per season. You know what to expect of him. Uh, Clayton Clutch Keller. What did he do for us? Did pretty well. Look at that. 18 points in 22 games played. Definitely something I wanted to see from him. He did he did all right. And Malkin uh, bounced back up. 18 points in 22 games played as well for us. So a uh, pretty decent season for him as well. There it is. Pavelski, 62 points. So Pavelski had a really good season. For me, he had a good season, boys. That's a pretty good one. Uh, Tuck, 50 points. Good. And Jack Quinn, 50 points, boys. So he did have a pretty solid season. Much better than last year, of course. So it's a it's a strong second year. He just, the entire time, minus 19. He wasn't playing with the right people, I feel like. It's just unfortunate. But uh, 50 points is pretty good for Jack Quinn for his growth. Middle stat, Skinner. And uh, Skinner was kind of disappointing because he played most of the year in the first line. Never really produced, boys. It's kind of disappointing right there. Uh, Darlene, 45 points. Just uh, a bit tad better, a tad better because he did get uh, injured as well. He, he almost uh, skipped on 10 games. So that's another 10 points, possibly. Not 10 points, but another at least 5 or 6 points that he's missing. Uh, pretty much better season than the previous one. So he's going upwards. This is his best season by far that he got. So he just did his best season. Uh, Peyton Krebs, 82 points, uh, 42 points, I should say. Uh, pretty good season for an actual debut. This is should be his debut for real, like his uh, Calder, uh, the Calder season, basically. So it's decent. Not anything to roam about, though. Lindholm was very disappointing. I feel like uh, Darlene and Lindholm together, they're kind of separating the points a little bit. He played a ra a great. They had good chemistry. He just didn't produce. He didn't score any goals. He just passed the puck a lot. Owen Power, 21 points for his first ever season in the NHL. Pretty decent, boys. 11 goals as well. Owen Power is a scorer. He's a defenseman that scores a lot of goals. That's for sure. And for, uh, that was pretty much it. For the goaltenders, 18 go wins only for Campbell. But he did, like, he played as many games as Lucan, and they both basically did half, ha half and half of the season because Campbell ended up basically being injured for half a season. So Lucan had to step up the game, and he unfortunately wasn't able to do that for us. The best score of the league, once again, with 60, uh, 60 goals, Ovechkin, boys, another 60 goal season for him. 56 goals for Drysaddle, 55 for Matthews. And man, that's 60 goals for Ovechkin, though. And now it brings him up at 850 goals. 260 goal season, boys. Ovechkin is, is crazy. He's going wild out here, boys. He's producing like crazy. I like I love to see that. Uh Drysaddle, my uh let, let's see the points really quick. Me, best uh, best player of the league, Mekinen with 104 points. How is he in his career? His career, 700 points. Okay. 
And we've got Crosby right here, 99 points. Crosby doing his thing again. He's in now at the 1,500 points in his career. So pretty uh, another great season for him. McDavid, Drysettle, Kucherov, Voracek, and Ovechkin, Eichel, and Patrick Kane on the top 10, boys, or the top 15. Next up, we've got uh, defenseman-wise, Quinn Hughes, best defenseman, 78 points. Dali, Fox, Latin, Chetrin, Wierenski, Hamilton, jo Yossi, and uh, Klingberg. All the best defensemen. And we've got Vasilevsky. By far, it's probably going to get the um, defensive the trophy. 41 wins. 925 saving percentage. We got Markstrom not too far behind and Merzlinkins uh, uh, or Skins, or whatever you want to uh, call his name. And all the rest are right there. We've got rookie skaters. Uh, Be uh, Beignet, Matty Beignet, boys, seems to be the one that's going to get the Calder, either, either him or Kent Johnson. Beignet is a medium elite. Never drafted, actually. He was never drafted, but he does play for the Kraken. That's interesting. A made-up player, boys. I don't know anything about this guy, but he wasn't even drafted. We're going to simulate really quick and uh, simulate the entire... Pre uh, off season basically, so simulate all the way until the draft lottery. We'll see who ends up winning the cup. Last year it was the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, so let's see if they're gonna do it twice in a row. Nope, but it's still gonna be a Canadian team. It's gonna be the Calgary Flames. There we go, boys. Canada winning the cup twice in a year, uh, twice in a row. I love to see that about them time. So the Calgary Flames winning the cup this year round, boys. Let me stop the simulation really quick. Uh, draft lottery results. We did not get uh, lucky. We ended up not having anything. Uh, we didn't gain. We didn't lose. Uh, Vancouver Canucks went up by two picks and ended up having the first overall. The Ottawa Senators moved up by two. So the Blues downgraded by one, uh, by two. And uh, the Arizona Coyotes downgraded by two. The St. Jose Sharks and us... And the Seattle Kra uh, Krakens, all of us basically after that, stayed pretty much the same. So we have the sixth pick overall, which is definitely good, boys. It's a really good pick. It's a really decent pick. So I'm happy about that. Definitely happy about uh, the fact that we got our hands on a, a top six. We could definitely go for a top five even. We'll see, though. So uh, Marlow decided to retire, boys. So we lost Marlow. Uh, he retired with uh, Chicago, obviously, the Chicago minor league uh, team. So a great career for him. And for anybody else, not really anything interesting def defense-wise. Do I have a lot of players? Okay, so Chara. So we did lose uh, Chara. That was his last year. Played most of the year as a backup. He played like nine games for us as a depth defenseman. He did uh, make some replacement. Had a really good season as a dev defenseman. But now he's gone. And Suter, Ryan Suter is gone as well. So there is that. And uh, the rest, pretty forgivable, uh, forgettable defensemen. And Corey Schneider and Enroth have retired, boys. So we did lose uh, some people. Ryan Suter and Patrick Marleau. Both are going to become coaches now. And we got Shara becoming a scout, boys. Very interesting. Okay, that's pretty much it. Continue simming. Yep, all of that. And we're not going to do the draft lottery today. We're going to wait out for the next video, boys. Coaching staff. Let's see, did we lose anybody? No, everybody's still there. Our coach, though, because he had a bad season, um, he downgraded to a B instead of an A. So that's uh, pretty bad. We're going to have to work around that for sure. And uh, for the rest, I feel like we're fine, boys. We're going to be fine now. We just have to look upwards, see what we can do for the third year. Hopefully, the third year, we're going to be able to at least make it to the playoffs. Because two years in a row without the playoffs, pretty bad. It's pretty bad, boys. So we got to be able to make something happen for us, right? We got to mix up our team, upgrade it a max. We still are going to get, we still have the veterans uh, like Malkin and stuff that we acquired. We got uh, uh, Keller. 
we if we can just upgrade it a little bit further and get rid of all these two efforts that are hurting us we should be doing just fine so remember to leave a like and subscribe to enjoy the video. i'll see you guys for the next one keep it easy